Let's review for a moment. We're going to consider the function f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 1. We'd like to find the slope of the tangent line at 2, the slope of the tangent line at 0, and the slope of the tangent line at x equals negative 1. Now, the issue is to find the tangent line at 2, I need to consider a point very close to 2. I'm going to consider 2.001. At this point, this is what I can do. And if I subtract f of 2 from it, and notice that the distance between 2 and 2.001 is very small. So I will find that the slope is equal to, right, so we end up with negative point nine 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 minus negative one point zero 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 over point zero 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 one which means we should end up with a slope of one and if we do the same for this exact same equation at zero we might consider what is f of 0 0.0001 minus f of 0 over 0 0.0001 minus 0. And this will bring us to 0.9997 minus 1 over 0 0.0001, which leads us to a slope of negative 3. In the first case the slope would have been positive 1. And we would repeat the same process at negative 1. This is, we'll use the same process no matter what we're doing. We're going to find the slope of the tangent line at a given point. And so with this in mind we can introduce to you one of the major concepts of calculus. Everything runs from this limit idea and that is the derivative. And one way to think about a derivative is it's directly related to the slope of a tangent line at a point. And the process of finding derivatives is called differentiation. The derivative of any function f of x is equal to, or is, the limit as h approaches 0. And remember, h was just the distance between two x values of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Notice that this is really just the slope formula. Right? If you want to graphically consider what we're talking about here, there is some function. It might look like that. And here is a point x. And here is a point h units away, x plus h. And these two points have y values associated with them. What we're saying is that as we move x plus h closer and closer to x, as h approaches 0, we'll know something about the slope of the tangent line. So now, instead of using this tangent line approximation, we can begin to use this definition to help us evaluate the derivative anywhere. So let's consider again the function f of x plus 8 or x squared minus 3x plus 1. We're going to consider it in different terms. So we're still working with f of x equals x squared 
minus 3x plus 1. And we're going to find its derivative using the limit definition we just had. So what we want to know is what is the limit as h approaches 0. And this definition is important that you know this of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. This is called the limit definition of the derivative. You must know this limit definition. The limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h minus f of x. Now notice that what this means is that we're going to be finding the limit as h approaches 0, and I can't currently substitute in for h because h is my denominator, but I can substitute x plus h into my function, which would be x plus h squared minus 3 times x plus h plus 1 minus f of x. Well, f of x is just the original function in this case, so it'll be minus x squared minus 3x plus 1. And this whole thing, this entire limit, is being divided, this entire piece is being divided by h. And I'm really hoping that h is going to divide out of here. And so I've still got the limit as h approaches 0. x plus h squared, well that is x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. When I distribute it into 3, I have minus 3x minus 3h plus 1. When I distribute in the negative, minus x squared, plus 3x, minus 1. All divided by h. And I'm going to keep simplifying because this thing's a mess right now. What is the limit as h approaches 0? What's nice is that the x squareds are going to cancel out. I'll use a different color to help. And I can see that the three x's are going to cancel out and the ones are going to cancel out. And so I'll just be left with things, in this case, that happen to have h's in them. Specifically, I'll be left with 2hx plus h squared minus 3h. And all of that is divided by h. When I divide everything by h here, I've got the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h minus 3. And now I can use my process, right? Now I can substitute in 0 for h. When I do that, I get 2x minus 3. What does this mean? This means that the derivative of my original function, the derivative of x squared minus 3x plus 1 is 2x minus 3. Right, that's what that means. I've just shown it by the limit definition. Shorthand notation it could happen this way. If I said that f of x is x squared minus 3x plus 1, then for derivative I would say f prime of x, which is just another way of writing derivative, is 2x minus 3. Another way to do this same thing, if this was in terms of y, if it was y equals x squared minus 3x plus 1, then we can say y prime equals 2x minus 3, or we could use this notation, dy over dx, dy dx equals 2x minus 3. So all three of these 
are different types of notation for the derivative of something. In this case, the derivative of f of x. So, so we're going to be using this process over and over and over again. Now notice also what this means. We can now answer the question, what is the value of the derivative at 2, for example? Well, at 2, the derivative would be 1, because 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 minus 3 is 1. If I wanted to know the derivative at 0, I would get negative 3, because 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 3 is negative 3. If I wanted the value of the derivative at negative 1, I would get negative 5, because 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. That by being able to take this derivative with the limit definition, I now don't have to go through that guess and check approximation process that I intuitively knew made sense. I can now actually calculate the derivative exactly. We'll be practicing this quite a bit in part two.